Hey, hello, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Yay, hello. we're back. Yep. We are back, and um, yeah, so uh, I hope it will get better, not get worse. Yeah, I, I, we are just like back to back to our streaming. We are back to our live on yep. the internet. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, as, it as was you a know, good break, though. Yeah. It was a really uh, good break, though. It was fun. Yeah, it is. So just so you know, if you're watching the video in the future, we are in the third, is it the third lockdown or is it the second? I don't know. 2.0. I'm, <laughs> 2 I'm on the third one. Yeah, for the, for Ireland is the third one now. Yeah, it's the third one for us as well. So yeah, it's the it's, it's our third lockdown, and we are just staying safe and tucked indoor, which is great. <laughs> yeah, we love it. Yeah, we um, love it so much. No traveling, no going anywhere. All conferences online, um, indoors. Well, we love it. You know, I took advantage of it. I I have a lot of plants. So I've become a plant's parents because of that. And uh, because usually if I travel a lot into conferences, then all my plants will die tragically. I think when I first moved in, my friend got me plants and then they all died. So my, my first batch of plants all died because I was too busy traveling and like I wasn't taking good care of them. But now it's just like I even built a greenhouse for them now. I'm like the opposite of what I was. So <laughs> I am very proud of you. I am not on that level yet. Um, I'm sticking with, I don't even know what I'm sticking with, but you cook, you run, you get plants. I, yeah, no. Yeah, not so much running these days, but I do go to the grocery store quite a lot now. This is the only thing I can do now going <laughs> out. So um, yeah, so that's that's basically it. And um yeah, so uh, maybe we should just talk about Python right now. So let me share my screen. <laughs> we have, yes, we have a few things. Yeah, so, so now. far, there's the update from us. You know, we plan to meet up in Christmas. It doesn't happen. So, uh, because of the third lockdown, but yeah. So, here we are. So, uh, so oh, why is Dual Python the first one? I think we meant to talk about PyCon US first, is it? Yeah, so, oh, by the way, I have, like, we have now the Nook of the podcast uh, or notions so I've made it public so can I can I show it to everybody are you agree on that because yes. Lace yes. is Go for it. doing most of the work for making the note and I'm just like free writing so but like oh, it's, it's a bit difficult to remember but I mean like if you're watching the video maybe you can force it and <laughs> edit there um yeah so this is the uh, the notes that you can follow uh our notes there so you see the first thing that we want to talk about is PyCon US which I think the CFP is now open and it's open till early February I think so um yeah yes they yeah. just opened and it's supposed to be really, really cool, although it's going to be online again. Um, yeah. But they also have slots for tutorials, and it seems like it's, it's going to be a fun one. So have you submitted? Are you thinking about submitting, Chuck? I don't know. I'm like thinking about what I want to do this year because I, I, I kind of I need some uh, new inspiration. So I, I actually really want to work on something about Django. So if you're a Django guru, uh, please contact me because I need some help. Mm -hmm. I want to work on a... Uh, or, to write it ORM. So if you want to adventure in that area, please contact me. I have a lot of things for you to do. <laughs> um, yeah, it will be fun. I, I, I would poke around with the ORM, which I mean, like I've talked with Adam before, like uh, Adam Johnson, I, I guess, before. And, uh, and basically he said that it's quite a difficult task. So I was like, okay, I would have a look maybe, <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, if you want challenges, I have a lot. What is... What is ORM? Just or, because I have no idea what it is. And maybe is, someone else does it. You know, it's just uh, ORM is uh, if you use Django, because uh, if you, yeah, so, well, I have some tutorial about Django before that, you know, uh, if you want to make some query at the database for your web application, you can basically build a model with Django instead of making the query yourself. So uh, there's already the, the default ORM for Django right now is basically a SQL engine. So you could make SQL query by not mm -hmm. writing SQL query, by just like using the uh, model within Django to do that. So that's really a good thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, in order to make it work for other databases, for example, Terminus TV, then <laughs> we have to write one for people to use. So yeah, so that's it. 
Um, but oh, I, guess, right. I guess in theory it could be done because uh, Terminus DB already got a Python client. So structurally it's very similar to the Django model, but uh, we just need uh, a converter. So you can think of it that way. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking at the converter then. Yeah. I mean, the person that is going to write the converter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, let's go back to PyCon US. So there's a lot of cool talks <laughs> in PyCon US. Uh, you can check out what's before in the last year and all this thing. Um, yeah, everything is uh, due on the 12th of February, like all the posters, tutorial, whatever. Uh, what What is Chalice, actually? Do you know what is Chalice? Mm. No, I don't. Yeah. Hmm. So actually, I'm so a bit talk like... Chalice. Yeah. Oh, click on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit uh, tired of actually like presenting talks. So, oh, it's the Hashi program. Oh yeah, Ooh, it's, how does that work? I think it's in Spanish. So maybe uh, announced at the first. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a Spanish word for talk. So maybe it's a. Uh, oh, is it? Uh, is is Spanish talk? So um, yeah. So if you're a Spanish okay. speaker, please submit a Spanish talk. I would love to do that, but I can't speak Spanish. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe Spanish, I could do like, that. How's your Spanish? My, my Spanish used to be very, very good when I lived in South America, like when I was traveling around. So I used to actually speak it, be able to speak it. But then I haven't spoken proper Spanish in a long time. Uh, but maybe it's, it's fun. Um, maybe you can do you one with have... Tanya. <laughs> Imagine that would be super cool, actually, because yeah. um, Miro was inviting me to to do um, the Python pizza one, but the one the the Spanish version, mm. and it was like a ten minute talk, so it was it was supposed to be super cool, but then I forgot to submit it. Um, but then this one, mm, this is interesting. I like this idea. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. You should, you should do uh, that we'll see, to, we'll see to just like polish your Spanish. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think it's, it's a motivation for me to learn Spanish. I always want to learn another foreign language, but I just fail to do so. Uh, I think I need to. Maybe I need to move to South America or somewhere that nobody speaks English. Then I can force myself <laughs> to do that. Um, yeah. I'm coming. I'm going for a, for a season in South America after lockdown yeah. is over. So if you yeah, want to join lockdown, me, we can learn Spanish together. Yeah, maybe lockdown is over. I will move to South America for a while, you know, just to get some sunshine, you know, like <laughs> just to like live a different life than what I'm having right now. Yeah, so I you don't want, you don't want to be a London person. You yeah. don't want to be a London person anymore. Okay, I get it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so cool. well, we always talk next. about too much about other things. Next, next <laughs> is Fostam. So Fostam, we have a Python bathroom, and I think all the talks is already published. I think this is a general website for Fostam. It's a good event anyway, so you could poke around. There's a lot of like it's basically open source focus, so you can um, join a lot of different topics. So not just Python, but other like programming languages, other open source things. Um, but we have a Python dev room, so let's check that out. So yeah, it's a yes. bit small, I know. Let me zoom in. Um, right. So Python, Python, Python. You see, there's so many things. Like, yeah, if you yep. are, if, for example, if you want to talk about Perl <laughs> or SQL, Mozilla. Oh, Mozilla. Yes. Well, yeah, I don't know how Monsfest is going this year because like i don't think they have it last year so i don't know uh, uh, but that last year was, was at the same time that they were like getting rid of 300 people from their paycheck wasn't it uh, uh like that was the time yeah. when they just called out the, the the conference so well maybe this year they have a little bit more reasons to celebrate oh no we'll see uh but the python dev room looks really 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 cool really they did cool. like a where's your talk here to put a notebook to production code that's a good one. That's the lace talk. And um, yeah, I'm here. I'm still here. Okay. I, I thought I got deleted by them because <laughs> I've trouble uploading my video. I was like, uh, were, were they going to cancel me? <laughs> like, but yeah. Okay. It works. Good. So yeah. Oh, lace, you got frozen. Or is it me? Hello? Technical difficulties again. Okay, so uh, let's give me a sign if you are back. So for some reason, I can't see you. Yeah, yeah, you got disconnected and I, I will try to summon her back. 
yeah so anyway i'm going so no now lace please come back soon but anyway yeah this is the python dev room it's yeah it's very very small and um yeah so join in and let me know <laughs> yeah lace is gone for a while but that's fine we have quite a good talk this year. I think they really make an effort uh, to have more like diversity of speaker. We do have Chin, we love Chin, and then we do have a few speakers that we basically, uh, we have seen them before. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, he is one of the organizers of Belpi, is it? Uh, yeah, I'm so bad with names. We have Mario, I think we have him, I think, in uh, and Jason, we have them in, um, in uh, uh, pajamas as well. So we do have good speaker. So Lace, you're back. <laughs> I am back. Yes, yeah, I'm so, sorry. I had, yeah, I had so issues. I, I was just Tell introducing me. the amazing lineup of the Python Dev Room. We do have quite a good speakers. We have Lace, we have a diverse <laughs> like background of speakers as well. We have Chin, we love Chin. And also we have, I think, uh, Kathleen, do I know her? Like, yeah, we have Jason as well. We have like a lot of speakers yeah. that they are amazing. We know them, so they are amazing. You're there. Uh, You're there. I'm there for, for some reason, yes. <laughs> I, I am still there. I, I didn't quite cancel. I was saying that like, you know, I have problem uploading my videos. So I'm like really struggling. So, oh, please don't delete me. But yeah, I'm still here. Good. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's really good. So uh, it's online. So if you can't go to FOSTEM in the previous years, uh, this is a good chance. It's free, it's always free, but uh, this year you don't even have to travel to Belgium to do it, so which is great. Uh, just check that out, it's just uh, FOSTEM. If you put that in your browser, you will find it. Okay, so next is, what was next? Can I have a look at the, I oh, the uh, Emma group. So oh, it, yeah, true, true, true. It's a new machine learning group you see for all my messages, sorry. Irish people. Why they do it like that? <laughs> like, LinkedIn just it's popped bad. all my messages for everyone to see. But, like, yeah, it's so weird. Okay, I have to switch it off a little bit first. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, it's maybe okay. you can talk about that without me showing yes. you a bit. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, the machine learning group is a new Irish group for people that want to learn machine learning. Uh, they're around the Emerald Islands, so for everyone that is Irish or is interested to know if there is a machine learning group in Ireland. Ireland. Well, now there is. Um, it was created by Andrew Maguire. Uh, he's a machine learning engineer, and he created because he wasn't really sure if there was anything for machine learning people to learn around here. Uh, so if, if it, machine learning is your thing, maybe you would like to check it out. It's machine uh, MLR, as in Ireland in Irish. Oh, by the way, Chuck, did you see we have, we have uh, a fan. We have someone saying hello in the chat. Hello. Hello. Sorry, I have only one screen and it doesn't show me everything. Is that? I always think that. <laughs> yeah, I always think that that's Luke, is it? Or or maybe I'm mistaken because like I've seen you a few times. So thank you so much. I, I know that you're my fan. Is that, <laughs> is that Luke? It could be Luke. It's Luke uh, backward. <laughs> that's me. Yeah, I was like, this must be Luke. Yes. Oh, we love you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we do. Oh, yeah, it is um, Yes. <laughs> yeah, so please support ML Ireland, which is amazing. And there's another thing. Uh, well, this is like I Ireland dominated, yeah, thanks to you. Yes. So what's this? <laughs> cool. So that is the, the meetup that is happening next month. It's the February uh, Python Island meetup. Uh, we have um, Sam talking about uh, security and authorization um, in, in applications. And then we also have Tyler Potts talking about um, DevOps for non-DevOps people, just like how do you, how do you deploy your Jupyter Hub application um, using Dask Gateway and Kubernetes without knowing Kubernetes. So yeah, so next. Next week, no, two weeks from now, next month, and it's supposed to be really cool. So yeah, if it's you're a very, around and you still have nothing to do, <laughs> it's a very early advertisement. So people need to put that in the calendar. I think. <laughs> I mean, it's next month, like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's really ahead. So I think we don't have much. We have GeoPython, which I think um, 
our good friend uh, Martin. Uh, he is uh, organizer of this and basically just advertise everywhere for people who are doing Python and Geo to submit to Geo Python. Um, so the deadline is actually two days from now. Um, and he said that it won't be extended. So your yeah, last chance and please submit mm. it. I don't know what to submit. Like I may not submit. I, I actually, I don't plan to submit because I have nothing Geo to talk about really. Like I'm not prepared to talk about Geo thing. So yeah, if you have anything geo, please submit and um, yes. yeah, and then you can get the ticket as well. It's in uh, I think his is that in Swiss franc or Swedish? I I think it's Swedish franc. Yeah, yeah Swedish, it's, I think yeah. it's Swedish franc. Yeah, um, so you can buy a ticket as well <laughs> if that's your thing. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's in April, it's going to be online, and it's always a good event because uh, I've heard really good things about it, even though I'm not a geo person, but like I'm always amazed by the, the, the talk lineups because they're always talking about crazy stuff that people can do with Python, like really? you know, satellite images, you know, like all these like research things that they do with Python that's really, really cool. Yeah. Mm, interesting. I wasn't, yeah, like I knew about your Python, but I haven't checked previous talks. Uh, but it sounds quite, quite cool. So yeah, okay, have a look then. Wonderful. Yep. What else so, do we have? What else do we have? Let's check the notes. And I think that's it for the news. I think that's okay. it for the okay. news. And while I'm preparing to uh, switch on the interview with Laura, and um, so maybe Lays, you can introduce a little bit about Laura, like how do we know her and find her? Wonderful, yes. So uh, Laura Funderberg, I think that's how we pronounce her surname. She is Canadian uh, and we've met her. She's super awesome. And we've met her because we were looking for volunteers for pyjamas uh, for the beginning, like beginning of last, beginning of December last year. And she just like came forward and said hello. And uh, she was awesome at pyjamas, helping everyone as well. And then we decided to invite her to come and talk a little bit about community and Python for Meet Meet Pi. So like. Opening, opening to 2021 edition with class. Because she's super cool. How was the how was the interview, Chuck? Because I wasn't there. It was just Chuck. yeah, it's good. I think uh, we just gotta go ahead and watch it, and then you can let me know how it goes. Awesome. So let's do that then. Yeah, let's go. Hey, hello. So uh, today with me here, we have Laura. Hello. Yeah, so um, I think first of all, uh, well, this is the, the first interview that we do out like in 2021 for uh, Meet Me Pi. So I think first of all, I would really want to uh, want you to maybe introduce yourself. So like for the audience who hasn't like met you before, they, they know and also like, where do you base now? Like like yeah we are recording it so uh so yeah maybe you can give us a clue why we have to record it <laughs> absolutely yeah so my name is uh, laura uh i was born in mexico and i reside in vancouver canada i've been in vancouver for the past six years um and as far as uh, uh my involvement with python i started working with python Almost four years ago, I started uh, by taking an online class uh, while also taking on a volunteer role as a research assistant along with Dr. Cedric Schoff. Um, I was doing my bachelor's in mathematics at Simon Fraser University at the time. And uh, yeah, so my, my first experience with Python was using Python to validate uh, sequence data. So I wrote some Python scripts and some bash scripts. And uh, later on, I transitioned to the roles I have today. Uh, thanks to this experience so yeah it's so bit... you you were a researcher right yes yeah so what are you doing right now uh so right now i i have two roles one i work as a data scientist for callisto uh, callisto is a canadian-based program uh, that has a focus on bringing coding data science and data literacy skills to students in grades uh, 5 through 12. Uh, so I, I use my coding to do data visualization and data cleaning 
And then I also hold a role as a DevOps engineer for iReceptor. So this is a platform that allows researchers access to data from the adaptive immune system. So again, some of my Python scripting comes into play to do some data validation. Um, on the ones outside work, uh, I like volunteering a bunch for Python events. Um, and so some of the things that I like doing is motivating people to get into Python. I started volunteering with Pi Ladies Vancouver this year. I'm pretty excited for what's coming ahead. And um, I've also volunteered for the Vancouver Data Jam. Uh, last year, we held this event online. We were initially hoping to, to hold this in person in April, and then things uh, came falling down into pieces. Yeah. So we rescheduled <laughs> the online in September. Uh, we worked along with uh, OceanWise, so, so we had a bunch of uh, projects, and our, our target audience was uh, people who are just getting started with Python and R. So we gave them projects, we formed teams, and then at the end, we were very impressed with what people had put together in very little time and completely online. So uh, do you mind if I ask, like, how long have you been using Python? About four years. Yeah. Four years, yeah. But yeah. Uh, do you also do R? Because I know some data scientists, they also yeah. do R. So you do yeah. both, right? <laughs> I do Python, R, and Bash. And Bash, okay, yeah. So uh, you also have to do some CI stuff, or uh, mm -hmm. you also have to... Yes, mostly scripting. Once we're once I'm dealing with very very large uh, chunks of data, I can't run things through my local machine. So I do I use Bash for scheduling on cluster computers. Yeah, so it's kind of like a it sounds like a one man band with that kind of like situation, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I, I know that like some yeah some people from research background they really can do anything. I was like, wow, you kind of like you're one person doing the, what the whole team is doing. So <laughs> well, no, we, we do have we we do have to divide work. There there's a lot that goes into hosting some of these projects, uh, but you do need to be able to to take on multiple tasks and roles for sure. Yeah. So you talk about the uh, the, the jam that you was organizing. So um, how do you find it? Like, how do you find like organizing these kind of things that's more like educational purpose for people who just started uh, coding and stuff? Um, so I was, so I, I started organizing this along with a friend uh, also based in Vancouver. So she's currently also organizing our ladies events in Vancouver. And she had this idea of bringing the Python ladies and the R ladies communities together and put together this, uh, this event. And so we got together last year, and um, I think it was seven of us working on this together. And the purpose was hosting a few workshops in R and Python and giving participants projects and forming the teams. So the idea was at the end of this, you have a project that you can work on, you have experience, and you can put it in your portfolio. So we really were focused on people who, who just came out of school and don't have a lot of experience. So uh, do, do you focus on any like demographic or is it just like any body who you know who you know uh, has just started coding or like you so, have a focus group definitely someone who just started uh, last year we had a very strong focus on women and members of minority groups yeah yeah, yeah. i think that's something that like uh, i was trying to do as well but of course here in london and i do also do it with friends that uh, we have you know meetups and all these things for uh you know women and also someone who want to change their career into doing uh, technical stuff so yeah <laughs> so i think yeah that, that's like really good that you're doing something that really helped to uh, build a community further yeah um yeah talking cool. about community uh, what do you think about because i know that you also like have been involved in some our community as well so like how do you think like comparing different communities what do you think python community is doing um, so one of my favorite things about the Python community, and I think one of the key components is uh, volunteering and open source. Um, and I think this this particular value uh, helps members have access to it. And I think it's also a driving factor in encouraging people to contribute. And contributing can take many forms. You can go anywhere from organizing a meetup to organizing a conference, but it can also um, include uh, contributing to a Python package or even creating your own Python library. Uh, so I think I haven't had exposure with a t to a ton of different communities, so I can't really speak to how it compares to others. But I think what I love about it is this one notion of volunteering. We all put a bit of what we can. And then two, making it open source. I think it's it's a, a great one for sure. Do you think it's good for beginners to like already contributing? Like, do you think it's too difficult for them or is it a good way to start? 
I think uh, contributing to an open source library as your very first project when you're just getting started might be a bit intimidating. Um, I, yeah, I think, I think, at least in my experience, I found it very helpful to have a single project where there was a bit more uh, structure and direction. And I think that the, that research assistance opportunity was really helpful in terms of getting me started because I, I was learning at the same time Python as I was learning the content of the project. So I think um, uh, contributing to open source involves knowing Git and GitHub, knowing the contributing guidelines and the etiquette, the unspoken rules, namely, well, okay, do, yeah, you, yeah. do you create your pull request? Do you just go ahead and wipe someone's work? So no, I think getting started with open source is a bit much for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I remember when I first started, like that, I I was really like scared, and um, I was well at the same time. I think I was very brave, and I, maybe I don't know what I don't know. But like I just joined like a meetup that I start contributing to pandas, which is a very very difficult uh, project to contribute to. And basically, my pull request got like review after review. Like every five minutes, I got like something that like you have done this wrong, and like you have all this white space at the end. Like how come you did that? Like for experienced people, I think it's like, you know, how come you never lynch your code? Like, because at that time, I did, didn't even know what is linting. So, um, yeah, definitely it's a bit difficult. But I think also I thank that experience that really opened my um, my eyes to like what you have to know uh, in the open source world. So, yeah, I, I always have this like um, feeling that I really want to continue because I also organize, organize some uh, Python sprints that, well, now it has been stopped for a while. Uh, but I think it's a really good opportunity to have like more guidance for people who just started that yep. we can hold their hands much better if, you know, well, if we're back into the same room together someday. <laughs> then, yeah, then that's really, really cool. Uh, so what was your first project that you contributed to open source? <laughs> first project that I contributed open source. Um, so I, I've, I've made small contributions to the to the iReceptor and Air uh, libraries, uh, which is again part of part of uh, some of the work that I do, where it focuses on providing infrastructure for researchers to access uh, data from the adaptive immune system. Um, so I think I don't have as much experience contributing to a big popular project. I've, I've been taking very small steps in that direction, learning you know, the, the in and out of good Python code, learning the in and out of pull requests, how do you work with others before I take on a bigger a role when it comes to contributing to a Python library. Yeah. I'm a bit distracted here because like I, I really want to know more about your experience in like with your background and open source because it's very interesting that I heard a lot of like a comment about you know uh, people commenting about researchers code that they put on github that is like oh it's like you know it's definitely like a, a academic code because it's not you know production ready and like there's also a, I don't know whether it's a joke or a real thing that like uh, not just like MIT, which is, you know, the, the normal license, they said like, oh, there should be a license for academics to use it. So when you use it, you have to, you know, accept that the fact that this code is by an academic that is not production ready. So I, I don't know what you feel about that, because it seems that you are doing very well in both worlds, like you are a researcher, but you also do very well in, you know, writing code and contributing to open source. Like, what do you feel about those kind of comments? Yeah, I think I was very lucky in the kinds of projects that I had a chance to get involved with. Um, because the projects that I've had a chance to get involved with have both experience from people who've deployed code to production and they also have that academic background. So really, I think it was for me, it was about finding a team of people that had both skill sets and then learning from them. Yeah, so I think yeah, it's really good that uh, you you have learned to do that. I think like some for some people, you know, they may not be like, oh, my focus must be like publishing my paper, so they would be like, okay, I, I would won't do it. But it's good that you you learn to kind of uh, do things that makes everybody's life much easier. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Yeah, no, and it's definitely a different approach. It's definitely a different approach. If if your only focus is to get your, your images or figures ready for a publication and then write the code well enough so that you can refer to it later is one thing, but it's a very different thing to write a package for others to use. It's an entire, entirely different beast for sure. 
Yeah. So I know that you are very, very involved in the Python community, not just the, the you know, the, uh, the events that you mentioned before, you also volunteers for pajamas earlier last year. So I think that's why we met. Um, so how's your experience with that? Like, first of all, like, how do you find, find out about pajamas? And like, what do you think about volunteering? <laughs> Well, I love volunteering, uh, and I learned I learned about pajamas uh, during JupyterCon 2020. I was uh, leading a sprint, and during the uh, the video final presentations, I had to I had the chance to hear from other team leaders, and I met Lace uh, during one of these sprints, and she advertised um, she advertised pajamas at the end of her sprint, and I thought, oh, you know, you can talk about Python while wearing your pajamas. It sounds wonderful. <laughs> I love the concept, and I, I knew I had to get involved. When I, I don't know, I just it, it it really spoke to to that developer slash creative persona. Um, and because of COVID, of course, we had to do it online. Um, but it meant that the event could be hosted for about 24 hours. So there was a chance to to go and, and see people from all over the world while being very comfortable at the same time. So it was great. Yeah, I think it, it pay off. Like, I think Lace and I like do mention it a lot of times in anywhere that we go. So <laughs> it really helps. And Lace is really good at persuading people to do things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's really good. <laughs> So yeah, uh, that's definitely definitely a plus, and we we are so glad to have you because you really help us a lot uh, during the event. Because you know, uh, and and having someone who is experienced with community work also help as well. So, um, what do you think? Like, would you recommend like these kind of things, like volunteering or like taking some community roles for people, even maybe people who just started or people who are defined as minorities? Like, what 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 advice you can give them? Like. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so as someone who does form part of a member of a minority group, I found volunteering uh, was very helpful, one, in learning uh, about events and finding projects to get involved with. Um, and as someone, if you're, if you're a member of a community who is considered minority group, putting yourself out there essentially is taking on a leadership role, which means you have an opportunity to make your voice heard and, and put your input out there. So it's a great way to help others who might be having a similar experience. Uh, that's one. Two, when you put yourself out there, it communicates to those who might be having struggles as yours that they're not alone in their struggle, which I think is, is of huge value for sure when you realize oh so it's, it's not like you're on your own in terms of getting involved um i think it is uh, great to to take on volunteering roles i would advise uh, taking one step at a time because it's very easy once you get on the volunteer train it's very easy to start saying yes to things so i i suggest starting one step at a time and see how you feel see how you you manage to um, juggle that with other responsibilities whether it's school or work um, in the long run, it is very rewarding for sure. So yeah, I, I'd say yes to to taking steps forward. Yeah, because I think most of the time that I kind of heard from, uh, like for example, women in, in in the community that they would feel like they're not good enough for things, like they would be a bit scared. For example, if I encourage people to be speaking at a conference, they would be like, oh my God, I don't know what to talk about. I don't think that I have any technical stuff to talk about. I'm not experienced in Python enough to do that. So what do you think about that? Like that kind of um, mentality, I guess? It's it's a real, I think that fear is a real barrier for sure. And I know that I have that barrier for some, some other aspects of my working life. Um, and again, taking small steps at the beginning, you don't have to take on like a big responsibility role like chair. But for instance, if you see a meetup, if uh, and and the meetup says, "Hey, we're looking for speakers," um, a meetup is a great opportunity to sort of start, where you put a little bit of yourself out there, and it is an opportunity to share with others what you've worked on. And the the community is normally very supportive of you. Some meetups have a mentorship program for speakers. Um, so I think I think if 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 you if if you're considering volunteering, but at the same time feel that fear or of, oh I'm not good enough, uh, 
give it a try. Try something small like a meetup, go to a hackathon if you feel afraid of being in the spotlight. Even just going to a hackathon, it is in a way volunteering to put your time sometimes on a weekend or on evening to help someone's project. Um, so yeah, for sure. And over time, you can build confidence. I think starting small and then building confidence over time is helpful in terms of feeling like you can handle a bigger role, like a like a chair role or like an org role. Yeah, and I think like uh, going out to speak is very important, especially for minorities, because like I there's something that I don't want to see in a conference is that all the like speakers are from very homogeneous, like they, they look similar, they, they may be from a similar group and the topics is very homogeneous, like they're all like tech topic, tech topic is like, you know, advanced in Python, advanced in Python, advanced in Python. That's like, that's something that I don't want to see. I want to see a diversity of like, people maybe talk about how to use Python to teach uh, programming, let's say, or maybe how, how people use uh, Raspberry Pi to to do some like uh, DIY projects, you know. Um, I would love to see different things. So I think having a diversity of a speaker, uh, you know, uh, demographic is is really important as well. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it can be daunting, especially. I think one of the bigger barriers I experienced as someone in minority group is um, there is this sort of back end experience of putting myself out there and experiencing rejection that can sometimes get in the way with you know me applying for things or me putting myself out there for things. And I think there's a lot of work um, to be done both in terms of easing uh, those barriers for people who who have that had experience. Um, uh, but for sure, I think I think uh, the biggest thing, and I think it's what you're getting at here is acknowledging that lack of diversity and how it impacts the kinds of talks we have at conferences. Yeah, but what do you think about like the uh, diversity and equality? I mean, like, because a lot of time, I think like we always talk about if you walk into a room of a tech event, you see like 90% men and like just one, like, you know, 99% men sometimes even like 1% women or like, it's kind of like you feel that, oh, maybe like, as a minority we don't have like enough representation in the leadership or i think it's like more of an issue especially in workplaces that maybe like when when things are real like you know we talk about pay we talk about you know uh, opportunity to to be you know uh, to, to up the career ladder that like whether equality is some issues that you think in in the tech world and like how shall we improve that yeah, so how the how is a big question. Uh, it's a big challenge for numerous reasons. Number one, you've mentioned that when you go to a workplace and you see there's there's a, a big discrepancy in the ratio. You know, you don't see as many people within your own team. That that it's definitely going to be. Um, what's the word for this? Intimidating, and there's also cultural um, challenges that come with being a few amongst many others that are that are not within your own circle. So um, I think one way I've seen this, or I've, I, like I can't speak to how to change it within a company, but one way that I've approached this kind of challenge in my own career path is understand that by taking on this role and by moving through that difficulty, by you know, bearing the intimidating environment, I am helping potentially balance things out. So I think in a lot of sense, I owe a lot to the women who came before me, who also had to put themselves through that struggle to make things a bit better for me. And I think bearing that difficulty while we find solutions is a great way to, to improve uh, that area for sure. Yeah, I found that having help from each other is important, like, because I remember when I was chatting with friends that they said about there is like this tech bro kind of community. So that's how like tech bros work, right? They would be like, oh, I know that uh, my company is hiring. I would recommend my friend or I would refer my friend to it. So they build a community of helping each other. So I think maybe, yeah, that's why this like women uh, meetup group or like this kind of uh, support network is important, especially when we feel that uh, as a women in tech, we have different difficulties in our careers. Cause like, for example, having 
you know, having a child could be more, uh, you know, challenging for, for women uh, than men because of different family roles and also physically women are the one who give birth to a child physically, right? So, yeah, there are more challenges. And I think as a woman in tech, like, like us, that we could, you know, help uh, each other and help, you know, the community. I think you're getting at a great point there, which is coming together to support each other, for sure. And sometimes this can mean we get together to work on policy improvements for the places where we work in or organizing meetups uh, and hosting talks to help our voice get heard. Um, I think it's definitely a collective effort. And I think the role of community is huge in this regard. Yeah, so especially I think now, like in, in pandemic, I think uh, there's a lot of challenges. And I have actually, because I organized some uh, data science workshop for uh, people who has no experience. And then in some applications, someone will write that, oh, I've recently get laid off or I've been let go. I have to, you know, uh, so they, they would take this as like maybe an opportunity to uh, to learn some new skills to help, the, you know, to help them in Korea. So, yeah, like, uh, in pandemic, I think it's like even we can see all these like things is become more severe <laughs> in this time. So yeah, I just like wish that things would get better soon. And if you know we go through this <laughs> this pandemic and if we are able to travel again, like which Python conference will you want to go? Like uh, <laughs> what would be your list? So, of, yeah, <laughs> I I have to admit I am excited about many of the upcoming ones. Um, I am excited about Pi Cascades. I know EuroPython is also coming up this sum summer and PyCon USA is also around the corner. All of these are going to be hosted online. Um, if I had to pick one, I mean, obviously I know that all of these are going to be online, but if, if there was a chance to go to any of these conferences in person, I'd probably go for Pi Cascades uh, due to the openness they have to explore creativity and art within Python. Yeah, yeah. I think for me it would be like, PyCon US because it's the it's the granddaddy of PyCon, right? It's, yeah. It will be like, you know, it's the biggest in the world. I think so far they they still keep uh, hold a record. I think so. Last year was time to go. Of course, like. <laughs> we just had the pandemic and I have to, you know, cancel it. So I still regret, like, still having, like, a hole in my heart that I have to go one day. So, uh, yeah, so I think um, that would be my choice. <laughs> but Pi is is good as well. I've heard good things about it, yeah. Yeah, um, we'll hope that hopefully by next year we, we will have a chance to do some in-person events in some form, hoping for better times next year for sure. Yeah, yeah. so I think. The last thing that I, I, I like asking uh, the, the guest will be like, do you have any words for people who just started their Python journey? What would be your advice or recommendation to them? Uh, so for those who are getting started, um, working with Python might seem intimidating and daunting at first. Uh, for those who are working through an online course, um, it, you might find that you experience loss of motivation or the concepts aren't somehow sticking. Uh, so for that, I'd recommend uh, finding ways to work with others. Uh, forming part of a community like the Python community, it's a great way to remain involved and motivated and also increases your opportunities to learn. Even just talking with others about Python is like, oh, I didn't know that library existed that solves the same problem I'm having. It's a, it's a wonderful way to keep you motivated. Um, Finding your local meetups is a good way to find others and to learn from talks. These are normally free of cost, and some meetup programs have mentorship uh, opportunities, whether for speakers um, or otherwise. Uh, and then usually by being connected to the meetups, then you also end up learning about other Python uh, conferences or hackathons. I think the hackathons are great ways to put in practice your skills and pick up. My very first hackathon, uh, was in was in genomics was hackseek hosted in vancouver and i had no idea what i was doing like i had very very little experience with python and i was just mind blown by the kinds of things people and developers could do but it it was a huge uh, motivation for me once i saw what you can do i was like oh wow i want to learn i want to keep you know 
growing. So going to meetups, going to hackathons, and finding someone to work with. Um, it's very unfortunate that with COVID, things like mentored sprints are sort of on hold because I think it's a wonderful initiative. If there's chances to collaborate on a mentored sprint, let me know because I am trying right now to put together some form of mentored sprints with Pi Ladies Vancouver. I think this is a wonderful initiative. Um, uh, and I am hoping that we can find a way to make it work for sure. Because it gives you that sort of project with some guidance. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I would love to see like more sprints coming up again because uh, it has been quiet for a while, you know, uh, partly because of the pandemic, partly because we had a winter kind of holiday time. But uh, let's hope that things are going back on track. And thank you so much, Laura. I really love talking to you. Hi, <laughs> thank you really so much great. for having me. Yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, so that's it for the interview. And um, I'll, I'll see you all back into our program. <laughs> Bye. Great. Bye. Bye. Okay. That was so cool. Yeah, I, I really like talking to Laura. She is cool. She is, um, yeah, she is very nice. I mean, like, she's very encouraging as well for, um, you know, people who just started Python. Like, I think she had a very, very positive attitude to anything. And, um, yeah, so that's really good. Yeah, that was quite fun. Yeah, really glad to have her in uh, in pajamas as well. Uh, I think mm -hmm. she's really helpful. Uh, so, yeah. I I did not know what was the reason why she joined us on pajamas, but I'm glad to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, that's why we are doing this, right? We have, like, yeah, it's also, like, part of the reason why I really want to do more things for the community, because um, I remember, like, how struggling I was when I get started. So I hope that there's a place for, you know, people to... Um, to share and to learn so they would they feel less uh less scared and talking yeah. about learning we do have a very good recommendation this week which um i think i've talked about this tutorial uh in my streaming uh you know the python zero to hero tutorial series on sunday i've talked about that like at the end of last year that uh, I was learning Flask, basically. What happened is that I, I was learning Flask. Uh, I, I did learn a little bit of Django. I'm not. I'm still not a very, you know, um, fluent Django user. But I tried to learn a little bit more about this amazing free framework. And then after that, I tried to learn Flask. And there's this like mega tutorial by Miguel. This this is amazing. I've been mentioning this all the time. I have sent him a message on uh, Twitter saying thank you. I really love his tutorial. Um, um, he also got a Patreon, so if you want to support him and buy him a coffee, please do that. And you see, this is like so big, like it got everything. I think, mm. like, kind of, if you go for half of it, you're already like you can already use Flask. But like, if you go for all of, all of them, I, I'm sure you'll be a guru. So <laughs> nice. So, yeah, I think you. And he's Jackson. Irish. Jackson. I. He's I, Irish. <laughs> oh yeah, I think so. I think yeah, I think I've read about him on Twitter, yeah. So, yes. amazing tutorial. Uh, if you are learning Flask, this is, I think this is really a way to go. Um, yeah, so it's, it's like, again, it's like from zero to hero. It's like from very beginning, installing Python, installing everything, and then to uh, kind of a hollow world, you know, um, application, adding more functionalities until you become a guru. So there's something mm -hmm. to check out. Maybe I can put. So yeah, you can just like go to uh, Miguel's blog here, and then you will find it. Or it's actually in the Nooks, in the in the you know Nook. So um, yeah, so this is how you can find it if you have the note. And I will try to put the note in the description of the video as well. So if you're watching the video, so you would also find this. Um, also, all this like information, we try to put the link like we did it before in um yeah like before you know <laughs> um yeah so i think that's it anything else to add like before we see each other next month oh yeah by the way we don't do it every week anymore we don't do it in the middle of the week anymore uh, we do it like friday evening because 
this is our new like show show kind of thing on a Friday. I, I actually don't drink that much anymore. Otherwise, I'll be having a beer normally on a Friday weekend, but I don't drink that much anymore. I just don't see the point of drinking alone in my room. It can make me feel sad. So, um, yeah, so this is how we do it Friday evening um, every month. Uh, I think it will be the last Friday every month that we talk about. And yeah. Yeah. I think sure. that's a good idea, yeah. Or last Friday. Um, I'm super happy to be back. Are you happy to be back? I'm happy to be back, and I'm happy to do something. I mean, like, I like we took a long break, and um, now, yeah, I find out times so that we could do something. And, yeah, being able to do things make me happy, basically. And also my plants make me happy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and cooking, and eating, yeah, and sleeping. Yeah, I'm thinking about making some mapo tofu uh, after this, and um, I've got all the ingredients. I, I have some, like, minced pork that I've been, like, sitting in my fridge for a while. I have to finish them, so i got to do that. By the way, mapo tofu is not always a vegetarian. Uh, some of the recipe got meat in it, so be careful if you order it in a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> for all of you vegetarian or vegan out there, just to be sure. Yeah. Cause, like, I want some... your recipe. Yeah, because I don't know what that is. Or even some sauce is not like vegetarian. Like for example, fish sauce, which is like a sauce very popular in Southeast Asian cuisine, but it's fermented fish, so it's very commonly used. So uh, yeah, make sure they don't put fish sauce in your uh, veggie dish if you are a vegetarian or if you're vegan. So yeah, always check. Yeah. I think like <laughs> I if you go to if you go to a restaurant in London, it's it's usually fine, right? Because if they put it as vegetarian, they know that, you know, they adopt it. But if you go to traveling in Asia, <laughs> you have to be sure. Oh, yes, yes. I, I was going to say, I love how we start talking about Python and all the time we just ended up talking about something completely different, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah, because because my father is vegetarian and like sometimes if we go to a restaurant together he'll be like no 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 they are not really vegetarian because they may use lard for the oil it's like no who's using lard anymore like you know it's not like 30 years ago so so yeah he's like really conscious he need to go to dedicated vegetarian restaurants to eat ouch because uh, he wanted to be sure that all the things he eat is vegetarian so yeah I think that's you know, okay okay so very like a yep. very Good, good vegetarian. Okay. No, I was vegetarian for a while, but never that much. Like I was always, yeah. I would like if there is lard on them things, I'll eat it. Like it's not a issue. The thing that I was always against of was like if there is meat on your plate, you take the meat out and throw it in the bin. Oh yeah. Just because you don't want to eat it because you're vegetarian and you're trying to save the animals. It's like well, some some something died for you to have that piece of meat on your plate. Uh, and if you just throw it in, throw it in the bin, then you're actually doing something worse. But again, like yeah, I mean, I had a friend who is like super nice. He is like you know he's vegetarian because of his religions, like but he's like he's kind of some some kind of branch of some Buddhism or something. But like the teaching is that like is that if if we go out to eat or like if we cook a dish for everyone, if it's like some stir fry with meat in it, he would just like it's fine. He would just take the vegetable. We can enjoy the meat, you know. He's okay with it, and yeah, it's it's really nice that you know it was very flexible but i think it's like it's, mm -hmm. it's a personal choice right i think it's less of a problem if you go to a western restaurant because you just order your own food it's not like you have a place to share all the time like in chinese food so <laughs> oh yeah sure because like chinese chinese food is like super communal right yeah like you have you. a lot of it's like tapas you have like medium-sized not small but medium-sized dish like you know usually the, the rule is if you go to a chinese restaurant if you have like four people in a group then you order for medium-sized dish with some of them are meat some of them are vegetable and then you all share so uh yeah. this is the rule of thumb so like how many to order if you go to a chinese restaurant depends on how many people in your group so this is usually how we go with it yeah uh, i can't so wait to go people, to a chinese restaurant with you yeah so more people more variety of dishes you can have so that's <laughs> why we love going in a big group <laughs> So, like, if you have two people, right, you have, like, for example, one fish and then one veg vegetable, and that's it, you can't have 
any other meat or anything. If you are of a group of six, then you have can enjoy six different kind of dishes. <laughs> Ah, okay. So I'm going to say that again then. I can't wait to go to a, rest a Chinese restaurant with you and a bunch of people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, there was a meetup group that like is called Chopstick something, Dim Sum Chopstick. I forgot. Like, so they, they gather in a group to eat together to go to an Asian uh, restaurant because for the reason of being able to share. Um, <sighs> yeah. Let's oh, try I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to see that there is that that exists here as well. Yeah, Maybe but of course, away. yeah, of course, it's not happening now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but uh, it will happen soon. Yeah, it will happen soon again. You can start a meetup in 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 Ireland after this pandemic, and you know, like a uh, eating like dining club or something. <laughs> now, if I start a meetup in in, in Ireland, it's gonna be uh, Python Sprints Dublin chapter. Yeah, sprint and food. Maybe everybody bring one dish of food and then you can share and code at the same time. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> sprint ice cream. Imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Eating club. Yes. I think Luke will be the first one who joined. <laughs> yes. That sounds about right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I think that's it. And uh, this is our great Friday. I'm going to make some Mapo tofu. And um, yeah. Cool, have fun. Yeah. That's my flat made for everyone. Yeah, I see. <laughs> I love that. I love that you're not like, because now I'm like alone. So it's good to have something. Like, if you have a cat, please bring your cat in the, in the you know, frame. I think we don't have. So yeah, if, if someone, if, like next time if we have a guest who has got a dog or a cat, then we can be like, please. <laughs> Yeah. Please add them to, to this review. Yes, I don't have any pets. No, I was thinking about getting a, a hamster. Like a rodent. Yeah, something like that. A rodent. But, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, a rodent. Any, yes. any rodents, just go to the sewer and grab. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So Stephen Green's full of them. Uh, <laughs> but no, too much work. No, not now. Oh. Right. Anyhow. Okay. So yeah, cool. otherwise we can be talking till you know till midnight. But we'll see you all next month, and um, we don't know who is coming on next yet. But uh, yeah, uh, we we'll, we'll let you know when you do. Just yeah. have a look. Keep an eye on Twitter. Yes. Right. So that's it. And see you. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. Bye. Oh, I have to put the banner. Wait. We can't end yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, bye. <laughs>